It is day one of the Quake World Championship. We've already seen some phenomenal matches. Hopefully you got to join us for the last one. And now we are moving on to uh, our next matchup, which is going to be CNZ versus Dramas. Joining me once again, we've got Dan and catch up on the desk. I was about to say table, but you're not, not, on, <laughs> not, the on, the, table. not on the table yet. <laughs> yet. All right. Uh, gentlemen, uh, welcome back for this one. Uh, we're going to be jumping in and hit looking at the picks and bands and whatnot. But uh, this is a tale of two teammates going head to head after Dramas' win. He mentioned that if he won his first matchup, this was a scenario that was likely to happen. So before we discuss these two players, we got a chance to sit down with CNZ beforehand. Let's see what he had to say as he was heading into this weekend. My gamer tag is. Dragonborn Sport CNZ. Uh, my seat is eight, and I'm playing versus uh, RMV or Dramis. Uh, I'm playing Quake for a long time, eight years in general. My favorite champion is uh, Anarchy because uh, it's a very fast champion and uh, it has med kit and uh, it can really help you to to play more uh, active and also defensive on map. I feel very well that I could uh, uh, back to the LAN, and I think everyone uh, glad about that. And uh, I hope I will show all my best this tournament. And I wish to everyone good luck and have fun to win championship, it's, that's my dream. And uh, I hope I will do that any day. Uh, my position is not so uh, easy, in my opinion, because uh, I'm playing uh, my teammate or one of the newest player on LAN, RMB. So it's uh, a bit unpredictable and uh, if I win one of uh, them, so I have my next opponent is uh, his it skills him, so it's the top one of the season. So I think everyone understands that it can be um, the hardest match. I can't actually say uh, who can be the winner of the championship, but uh, my top three is uh, crazy uh, Rafa and uh, kill them, so can be one of them. I mean, gentlemen, I don't know that anyone could predict who is going to win after what we've seen so far, but uh, I think that what makes uh, the most exciting finals. So CNZ, we just heard from him. Dan, your thoughts? He's um, somebody that comes in always as a bit of an underdog, but maybe doesn't deserve to be. He's somebody that always comes into these finals and has a strong run consistently. Yeah. Uh, he said he sits, sits eighth in the season and it was a decent season for him. I think versatility is something I would say about his game, but also in the season at least a bit erratic. And maybe that's a, a period of time where he was, you know, experimenting with things like that 0-3 against Zeneku, for instance, 0-3 against Razor, really a little bit more expected, but then finishing out with 0-3, 0-3. So like against players that are evenly matched, he always goes toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Obviously they're looking at the results. The time he struggles is against the very best and that's an evolution in his game but right. he's somebody that can stay in these games given his skill set and versatility and that's a, a, a really valuable skill in a tournament situation one would almost think that the map pool was a little bit different for cnt purely because i mean like how many times would we see molten fools be one of his favorite maps mm -hmm. that he would do really well on then obviously in this uh, where we are now no molten fools right but those larger maps are always something that you would kind of look at with him because uh, I know that he mentioned even in the video that he likes to play Anarchy because you can be aggressive if you want to be, but it can really help you to play defensive as well. Yeah, Defensive can very much kind of be his style. Yeah, um, Multi-layered, as everyone is at this stage of competition, but he's, uh, as we've always said, discipline is the word you use with CNT. He's, he's not a huge risk taker. Like He'll do something if it just mathematically makes sense. Other than that, he just plays yeah. a really rock-solid game of Quake. But on the opposite side of it, Dramas. Yeah, Dramas is a, a very different story because Dramas is, is not afraid to sort of go a little bit against the grain, sometimes sure. for better or worse, but 
as we've clearly seen today, able to keep himself composed, you know, even in the most stressful of situations. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've heard the term um, rage inducing thrown about around Dramas' play style. Not from <laughs> me, from the players, um, because of the way in which he just, he does things that shouldn't work and makes them work. And that's really annoying for, you know, these methodical players who've been sure, brought up. Sure. The doctrine of Quake, you play it this way. Right, right. And he comes in and goes, God, no, this is my style. But um, no, he's like, in terms of raw skill, he's up there with the best. Yeah. I think, again, erratic's another word for Dramis. Like, started off incredible. I think he was top five after the first three or four weeks. And then there was a, a succession of very serious losses in the middle of the season, as you can see there. So... If he brings his A game, which he didn't this morning, he, but what he did this morning was played stable. I think. Right, and right. that's something we don't see a lot of from Jamis. Yeah, right? played to win. Exactly. More than, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and when you look at obviously one of the the sort of low uh, the games during the low spot of of the season was against teammate C and Z. So uh, are we going to see a repeat performance? You know, no one quite knows for sure. Well, technically we can't have a 3-0 in this situation, but that that's okay. Uh, all right, it comes down to uh, can overcome two players on the same team. Typically, they seem to be pretty uh, comfortable playing with one another. Might even be practice partners. We'll have to, we'll have to see. But uh, let's take a look at the picks and bans, right? I think that's going to tell a tale here for us all. We're going to go Awoken and then Ruins. And if I'm not mistaken, finally Deep Embrace getting in there, sneaking in, should we need to go to a third map. Catch up, I'm gonna start with you, taking a look at the picks and bans. CNC said, hey, I love to play Anarchy, has it there in map number one, but what do you think as you uh, take a look at that? Personal bans, again, uh, the removal of the slash against Dramis does make perfect sense. Uh, the slash has historically been one of his absolute strongest champions, and then on that first map, Battle of Light, sure, but it's going to be Athena versus Anarchy. So I don't imagine that will be a particularly low scoring game. Ruins yeah. of Sarnath afterwards, this is where things get a bit more expected. The Galena from CNZ, that's going to just fit his playstyle extremely well. Dramis, I can't go in with one form of speed, so let me just go in with another. Hence the Strog pick right there and the removal of the Nyx, which is another thing that can help patient players, right? To get rid of it. Uh, Deep Embraces, as it's been said earlier today, it can be a bit of a risky map because. I mean, there's a snowball effect, and there's whatever that happens on Deep Embrace sometimes. Right. The Doom versus the, again, the Death Knight. Like, it's becoming such a popular champion recent months. Yeah, I, I'm actually, this is one of these situations where I'm like, oh, I kind of hope this goes to the third game because I think that that sets up, given these two players' style and then the champion picks and, and what the kind of map Deep Embrace is, it sets up certainly for an entertaining game. But Dan, I'm going to ask you, you know, do you think it'll go to the third map based off of what you're seeing here? I think it will, yeah. I, yeah. I feel that first two maps in particular fairly even. The Athena pick from Dramis is good. We know he plays a strong Athena with Slash at the table. It's nice. I really like the counter of Anarchy as well, matching the, the pace there. And as we rightly pointed out, he loves that champion. Ruins, I'm interested to see Dramis picking Ruins. It's not something I would have associated with him previously. Mm. Um, and the Galena coming out from CNZ means he has that tempo control there. He can slow it down. Right. He can play around those totems. And that's scary if he gets into that rhythm. But at the same time, Dramis on the Strog, he gets his crouch slide. He can use that rail really well. He can keep that pressure high. He can definitely snowball there. Death Knight as a first pick when there's lots of other champions available. It could have been a Sword Egg or anything, you know, is a little bit interesting on deep. Like, it's, it's okay. But we said that last, I mean, I wasn't casting, but last game, and it was and Dan's hands on Awoken, pretty much useless. So it seems like a bit of a, a wild curveball at the end there to see it come out. And I hope it goes all the way, because you're right, we all will have deep anyway. Yeah. Any final thoughts, Ketchup, before I let you two I'm, have at it? Maybe it's the fighting game player in me, but I'm always biased towards like my favorite champions. So <laughs> being able to see that sort of Death Knight thrive, I just always like seeing what players have cooking up. You know, when people start going sure. in with different picks, player expression, player experimentation, and you know, I guess Death Knight's currently the new hotness, and then in a few months' time, I wonder who the next flavor of the month will be. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, sometimes that's not without purpose. 
And I, these champions on certain maps can become real mainstays. You know, I, I would say that at least DK's capability there on the final map, Deep Embrace, it, it does offer more, say, zoning mm -hmm. uh, potential than it does, like, I'm just going to burst you down in some situation where maybe you're standing still on top of heavy or something. I don't know. But, you know, stopping someone from uh, getting the mega or even controlling the middle area, that's kind of what I would expect there. But hopefully we get to go to a third map to actually see it. But it looks like we're loading into Awoken. So so, gentlemen, two teammates battling it out. Take it away. The thing is, Dan, if we're looking at style versus style, you'd think that Awoken favors Dramis and then the Ruins of Sarnath, in theory, might favor CNZ. Uh, it just depends on space and, and room to move around. You know, CNC's going in here with the Anarchy as a kind of answer to the Athena so that Dramis isn't going to be able to kind of go where he wants, when he wants, and always chase you down. And then at the same time, well, the other maps likely to be very different, a bit more rail heavy. If only it was that easy. But also, let's not underestimate the aggression potential of CNZ. And as we say that, he instantly pops the injet to go as quickly as he can across the map, scooping up these weapons. And, you know, over aggression is not something we would often associate with CNZ, but it was, in part, actually one of the causes of that mid run of poor performances that he was going too aggressive. So he does have it in his locker, it's just tempering it and using it in the right way. And so, you know. Awoken is a decent map for him nonetheless, and he has an Anarchy, which is still exceptionally strong here. Let's see how aggressive Dramis will want to play over on this Athena and how well they know each other. My gut is saying this is more leaning towards a CNZ victory than Dramis, but you know how impactful Dramis can be anyway. Connecting with that rail as well. Both items have gone. I think up to 20 seconds. They're just going to tease each other out, see who can connect with an earlier rail. Both being lights, each rail is so exponentially impactful to the subsequent moments of the game as they toy up for this next heavy catch-up. Bit of a bonus rail there from Dramas earlier as CNZ gets caught swapping weapons now. The aggressive push almost getting shut down, but not quite. As Dramas with that 1,000 miles an hour LG comes in and steals away that first frag. And on a map like this, this small, it may not look like a, a huge divide between those major items, but with the speed, especially of the Athena, uh, the opportunity to take both is quite real. But a defensive tribal, delicious stuff there from CNZ. And that's going to force Dramis to back away. Sets up for a bit of a more interesting fight here towards Heavy. The rocket's coming out, but no one's nice. home. Oh, the rails. CNZ's rails have just haven't quite been able to match Dramis' so far, enough to really pivot the fight into the favor of the Athena. No, but the chip damage has, and you saw very quickly just the succession of Tribal and LG spam meant that the stacks were tied up. However, the kind of the power of Athena, particularly with the grapples, has just been too much for CNZ at the moment. He is preempting these pushes, but they're just too much from Jamas. So he needs to stabilize. And he's probably gonna be locked out of this next rotation of items. He hasn't got a rail either, so he's just gonna rain down a little bit of spam and try and hold out for this mega. But as that Athena comes flying on in, he's just gonna have to back on up as he cannot contest and shouldn't even be here. Ow! And he even loses out on his life because of it. Kind of getting jump scared by that rail right there. CNZ eats another nice. one, make that a third as Dramis secures that fourth frag. I mean, come on, we're only two and a half minutes in here. But this is the aggressive capabilities. Those light oh. champions not spawning with a huge amount of health. <laughs> Dramas with another oh. wonderful rocket. Now, CNZ does get a slightly favorable spawn here in position for heavy, but actually looks like valuing the uh, mega instead. So we're going to sort of happily concede it, maybe. The rail's going to be good. If we can get those opening rails and just one single shot is going to undo that heavy's progress. Or a rocket, just like that one. No, but you're right. The rail is critical to your point. He's not been connecting so far, but the thing needs to continue to play around it. Lots of time between the next major items. Again, Jarvis is standing strong at this choke point, and CNZ is pushing in. They do, however, trade, and CNZ gets the better of the spawn, so we'll pick up this heavy, but not before eating a rail. Not too bad considering the rail came after the pickup. There's another one though, keeping him low. CNZ himself without a rail just cannot afford to make any sort of maneuvers. It has to be more careful around the map. It is always going to be difficult against an Athena with that grapple, with that speed. And at the moment, with the way in which Dramas are connecting, CNZ is living on the edge. 
Well, to your point, kind of looking at the stats here, Drama's currently sitting at basically 80% rail. CNZ only on 11, and not through lack of trying to hit more. So uh, there's a real definite example as to why some of these fights just are not working out for CNZ. The, the opening damage isn't there, and Drama's' ability to just kind of steal that damage away. And once again, CNZ just cannot connect these shots. It's a, it's not the one and only reason that things are falling short, but my lord is a significant one. No, but there was a bit of a mistake there from Dramis losing out on that Mega when he had no right to. Also, CNZ in position early for this pickup. He will be able to get it as well, having done a lot of damage to Dramis. Will he balls it and rocket jump up? The answer is no. Misses out on the health as well. That might not come back to bite him. Dramis is in the air. He's a little bit early, and he will give up his life. And again, that is the small errors in these type of tournaments you cannot afford to make. This time from Dramis, missed out on two major items, and he's given a lifeline to CNZ. Can't rely on just the rail. That's that's the golden thing. You know, if you want to just be a machine, a Terminator maybe, and you, you just want to be able to hit every single rail shot, then be my guest. But getting that every single match is a bit too much to demand. However, can definitely cover your back in some of these instances. Now CNZ, respectable amount of stack. Decent little rocket there too, just to catch Dramas as he's escaping that situation. But five minute warning, Dramas very, very vulnerable. And even with these rails that he's connecting here, CNZ is kind of happy to push forward, concede that one shot just to keep the pressure on thick. Dramas, a decent little amount of stack, and oh my oh. lord! Oh, CNT returns the favor though, and actually Dramas still sitting around to fight. What? Oh my god! Where did he go, George of the Jungle? As he flies on through, steals away, actually, and with a frag, but without getting the item as well. He's still pretty low, but it doesn't matter when you're connected to the rails like Dramas is. But now. He's hitting these rails, but that is the only thing catch up keeping him in this game. This momentum is very much in CNZ's corner. He's got the rotation. He's got the items. He's the one in position. Soon as Drama stops hitting rail after rail, then we'll see CNZ beginning to claw it back into this game. Lovely use of the grapples to get into the vicinity to try and finish off his opponent, but it wasn't enough. The super shotgun was the right choice as he hits him coming out the teleporter. No and how is Drama surviving this? He's in the area for the mega, but he just cannot go up that jump pad. And it feels like a matter of a time now before he gives up his life. But the question is, how much damage will he do? A lot. 120 right there. And CNC cannot finish off his opponent. This is the stressful side of things where you, you've been look, we look at things through CNZ's point of view. Looks like he's the one in perfect control, but it's just that every well, single fight is. that breaks <laughs> out, it's you get elements of watching Toxic almost, where the opponent just refuses to miss. Yeah. And if that's the case, I mean, what do you do? You can make any play in the world this if they just hit every single shot. However, wait a minute, two frags back to back. Is this where things start to somewhat shift? Because now CNC has the stack, but also Dramas has to focus on getting all these weapons back up. Well, the smart man would try and stop Dramas from getting his beloved rail. It's hard against an Athena, but a strategy nonetheless. Saying that he has spawned over on that rail. He's actually in the area as well. Good timing from Dramas to drop down, but he might be going down here if he can't get out. CNC wary at best of times. Has hit his opponents. He knows he's on the ropes. He also knows he's trapped. But he's still an Athena. He's still going to go up aggressive. What? And you have to be wary. Drama is coming out on top again. But there is still plenty of time catch up. The question is, can CNZ wrangle back that control? Dramas being able to make a mountain out of a molehill has always got to be, you know, you said it yourself, as said by some players, a rage-inducing yeah. style because you look at the spawn, rail and super shotgun, that's all you had, and somehow Dramas went, right, this is all I've got, I'm still going to find some slippery way to make it work. And in doing so, has given CNZ so much more work to do. And these rails are just looking crispy as ever. The rocket can't get those midairs against Athena. I mean, you've got to win the lottery if you're trying to hit a midair against her when she's using that grapple. A spam, lovely connection, and all of the hard work just absolutely eradicates it. I was about to point out, he doesn't need to force the issue, but unfortunately, he ran headfirst into Dramas, waiting for that maneuver. But Dramas is not using the pressure to convert it into any sort of control. He's quite happy, it seems, just to maintain these defensive positions. If he does miss any shots, like he is now, this is when it becomes concerning. But CNZ is not in a position to punish it, and Dramas repeats his procedure. Hit more rails. Oh, such a high-risk gameplay. 
It really is. You know, it's looking at him hit all these shots, you'd think, how is it high risk? But even two missed rails back to back and one bit of opening damage from CNZ and that fight turns on its head, especially seeing as they're too light. It's in such high demand that you have to play well. Yeah, because like the, the aim has been the number one factor here. Exactly. You can see him covering the exits. He's not challenging the items, but what he is doing, he's just being ever present at the pickups. So anywhere CNZ wants to maneuver, Jamis is there to make sure he is punished for it. So what? This is actually a really, really good demonstration of defensive play. However, as you point out, if you do not execute, that's when it becomes problematic. And CNZ is continuing on his rotation. Dramas is there, but hasn't got the rocket launcher. So can't really do any sort of significant challenge. And he's trapped, it would appear. But scuttles away for now. It only really takes one more frag, and you can easily get conversion. No. But no, the easiest rail of the day is missed. There's still time. Pickup is there, and Dramas is on the ropes. But being an Athena catch-up, he can get away so easy. As I said, he's trapped. He's done a lot of damage, though. Question is, does he now know when this heavy is going to spawn? And he's not. He actually favors the rails and misses two in a row, just as you said. Could that be the end of him? He's got time for this. He's got time for the chase. And he knows where he is. He found it down below. Doesn't connect with the second. Jamis is fairly low. <gasps> no! How? What? CNZ. Can you find him? You have eight seconds remaining. You know he's going to play this TP game. He's gone on through, but he's not going to be able to catch him now. Catch up. That is absolutely mortifying. I'm really, really surprised over how that map ended. I mean, oh, the, the angle was there. What happened? I just, that is just execution. Like, it was worked. That's the thing. It was worked so well. Took the items, he pushed, he made the opportunity happen, but it doesn't matter if you do not be clinical in those situations. He did everything right, except click his mouse at the right moment. And that has cost him that map. He would have tied it up but with that pressure, with that momentum. Look at the pickups. 15 heavies, 12 megas to 4 heavies, 7 megas. He had double, over double the items, and he just couldn't close it out. Things might change, though, as we jump into our next map, which will be Ruins. So we're going to have a little bit more of that extra sustainability. We've got the Galena coming out to play, which has always been a, a really nice little champion, yes. I think, for CNZ. But, I mean, one of the most concerning things here is that the rail from Dramis has been on fire. Like, just to remind everyone, there was a point on that map where Dramis's rail was on 80% versus CNZ's 11%. And now we're going on to Ruins, which is one of the absolute most rail-heavy maps out there, combined with the fact that Dramis has the more aggressive champion, the more mobility-focused champion here in Strog. If he's able to essentially take that accuracy and keep it going the way he did on Awoken, Ruins could be very tough for CNZ. It could be. A lot of it came down to the situation in that CNZ was very much forced to take these risky maneuvers to keep going aggressive because he was obviously um, not in the lead. And Dramas played around that. The concerning thing from Dramas' perspective is that there was many opportunities where he opened the door to regain that control, you know, successive rails, keeping his opponent low, but he didn't or didn't feel confident convert that in any sort of control. Now, if CNZ can manage the map just as well as he did for the final few minutes of this game, be a Galena as well, and not lose the lead, I would definitely actually favor him in that situation. The control was strong, and he was beginning to string together more damage, and so that's going to be the key. If he can maintain that control, Dramas is going to be locked under this map. It's such a, a bizarre train of thought, but if, if Dramas didn't have accuracy of that caliber in the last map, you'd, you'd definitely think that CNZ would have won that. Yeah. If, if the aim wasn't that out of this world ridiculous, uh, it could have gone a completely different way, which, as we said before, is such a demanding style of play because it, all it does take is one or two key misses and then basically all that momentum just slips through your fingers. It's like a sieve, you know what I mean? Down it goes, down the drain, and then yeah. before you know it, your opponent's got full control, your opponent's being really, really aggressive, especially with the champions that were there before, you know, Anarchy, we've seen what that champion can do. A big a big part of that victory well was, um, was the Athena. Yeah. And, you know, the start of this uh, pick ban phase, CNZ was in a situation as well, probably in his head, do I ban Athena for Awoken or do I ban Slash for Ruins, which I want to pick? He chose the Slash. And 
you can see the situation now. Athena was such an integral part of building that lead and sustaining that keep away pressure just because of the grapples alone that no other champion would have offered the same utility to Dramas in that situation. He doesn't have that now, as you say. He doesn't have a crouch light champion there, which he will enjoy, but it's a very different set of circumstances. Yeah, I mean, one would hope that the ruins of Sarnath right here is going to go into the favor of CNZ just to make that pick and ban a bit more worthwhile. Otherwise, you know, masters of hindsight and all will be looking at it thinking, ah, perhaps you should have gone the other way. But yeah. no one's going to know that more than CNZ, so it's entirely pointless to go over. However, as we begin checking things from Dramas' point of view, already that miracle weapon in possession. We've got the LG, but more importantly, we've got the rail, now the rocket, and just before you know it, Unholy Trinity is locked in and good to go. Now, one of the things we have forever seen on the ruins is those closing couple of minutes. If Dramis has anything that's even close to a decent lead, and we have like you know eight minutes on the clock, that is often where crouch sliders in particular are really good at waiting out the clock, and Galena is not going to have mobility to chase you. So really, I, I would say the pressure's on CNZ, not just because of the fact that there's one map down, but this matchup, you cannot fall too far behind because the mobility will become a massive problem. At 100%. Galena is not a champion you want to play from behind or just because of that fact. Galena wants to play slow. She wants to build that overstack and just... Oh, what a rocket baby. that was. Fortunate as well. CNZ would have been on the ropes if that didn't connect, but it did. We're back to square one. There is a fairly sizable split between the items. That's exactly at that moment CNZ turns up to show base and Ooh, doesn't actually convert. God. As Dramas connects with the pixel point rail to the feet of CNZ and takes that lead away. The rail is so consistently ooh, falling into his own momentum there, perhaps thinking maybe I can just jump in there, take that light armor, start to recover. And the drop down Dramas, these rails, mate, what are they? Once again. Another high risk maneuver from Dramas with only a rail to his name. CNZ fully stacked. Dramas actually steals away both major items and gets the frag. What? Air assault, my friend. And there's another rail to bring it forward. We'll take down those turrets. Turrets? Totems, wrong champion. But oh my good lord. CNZ still in the area, just biding his time, trying to get away. Dramas hears him, but he's got three seconds to make this count and pick up an Whoa. easy frag. Scuttle around, rocket jump up, rinse and repeat on the map. He's in trouble now. This is the situation we didn't want him to be in. Unfortunately, he is for now. Gets away, but at what cost? There's nothing to work with. Just oh, gets Dramis. Picked apart. Another free frag. I really got to point out, Dramis so ready for every small situation here that he, he acknowledged the LG pushback and was ready for CNZ to reach that teleport exit faster. I mean, it is those small details that can really push a player apart, but if there's anyone out there right now in the Quake scene that's feeling momentum, Dramis is absolutely at the top of the list. And I kind of spoke to him before, you know, I, I had a chance to chat to Dramis over some lunch, and this was after uh, his original match. And I was like, you made a sweat in that first map, man. He's like, oh yeah, me too, but I feel like I'm really in the zone today. And he said it himself, he, he feels like he's, re he's feeling it. I think that's being externalized in this gameplay. Now, there's a lot of damage done, but not enough to even tickle the remaining stack that Dramas is currently working with. LG, not Ooh. enough to kill, though. CNC drops. There's not a lot of health. There will be some pickups, though. And, well, of course, yeah, Galena Totems. Should have known. Yeah, CNZ was reaching this critical point where he had to make a decision and had to stop the bleeding. So when an aggressive and it actually worked out this time, he left himself plenty of time in this map to begin to forward come back. But at that same time, it has to be one step at a time, catch up. It can't be all or nothing now. As I said, it continues the aggression on, on Dramas and actually more of a questionable play. He's got the timing on the heavy, so just treat for that. But maybe a sign of slight desperation, overexposing himself there to the American. And Dramas is in position to punish it once again from above with the rail. Seems he at the moment not coping with the positioning and the speed that the struggle is showing. Every item that CNZ is picking up is being immediately just nullified, neutralized by the rails that Dramas is able to find. I'm actually going to go check these stats again because I'm so curious. Fired a total of 20 rails, hitting 70% of them. But once again, Dan, versus the 14% yeah. of CNZ. I mean, what can you say? This is always going to be a critical weapon, but particularly in the hands of Dramas and CNZ, you know, if you look at that disparity and ask, how can you, how can you stay in the game? You're being out damaged five to one. 
CNT is able to keep the stack much higher too. Getting plenty of the items, and that's not even factoring in the amount of totems that he's able to pick up. Yet somehow, still, never outstacking Dramis. Dramis is just squeezing in these miracle rails from pretty much everywhere. But a lot of players have been saying it. We're on LAN now, and so many players in these practice sessions have said, yeah, the rail on LAN feels crispy as anything. And if you're someone like Dramis, where this is like your, your star weapon, it's nice. only ever going to help you, but that nice little two-piece combo, fantastic. And you know, we're talking like Dramas is running away with this. He really isn't. It's three to five, and CNZ only needs two to tie it up. Exactly what we said before. He built a nice lead, but it was an early lead. And so that's always a semi-risky situation where you take your foot off the pedal a little bit when there is a lot of time to spare. I'm not saying Dramas did that necessarily, but in a similar vein to the previous map, he is giving breathing room to CNZ. Lin gets some items for free, saying that he has now won himself this Mega. And so that will be the first priority, to keep control of at least this single item and try and punish the exit routes on that heavy if he's not going to contest the rail. That defensive play from CNT was fantastic. Knowing that there's a rail in hand and I've just shot a Pika, there's absolutely no shot that Dramas isn't going to try and peek this and get some free damage. So CNT hugging that wall for dear life. He's caught him up the jump pad, he's pinned him with the LG, he's going to go flying back down and flying back up again as they chase each other what? up and down. Some sort of platform game there, but CNZ comes out on top and it's four to five with four minutes to go. And this methodical play starts, CNZ building himself into the game once again is showing dividends. He's beginning to connect with more rails again. It just seems that every single map he needs a three or four minute warm up. That placement of the Pika, by the way, was phenomenal. Uh, it was so unlikely CNZ was going to be ready from that angle, least of all from that range. But again, it's just neutralizing any of the benefits from these items that he's able to pick up. And he, what? How did he even see that? The frustrating Ow. thing for CNZ is he's not necessarily making any big mistakes. Yes, he could be a little bit more careful here or there, but at the same time, he has to make these moves. And Dramas is just set up, preempting and pre-firing, and he's connecting with everything. And that's the problem. There is not much more CNZ can be doing. He's doing the right things, though. When he's not in the right position, he's not making the moves. And when he's in the right positions, like now, he's continuing to aggress. He's got himself a mega for his reward as well. And connects with the rail. He knows how weak Dramas is. And this is the opportunity he has to capitalize on. Dramas is sticking around. Falls on down. CNZ doesn't hit the rail, though. And Dramas gets away for now. Don't forget the heavy. But he also wants the frag. He's chasing him. He connects with the rail. He knows how dangerous it is. See, Dramas is living alive and just goes down. This is the next layer that can be obtained, right? You can fight someone that is aiming for what feels like three people at once, but this is where the experience comes in, where aim is just one piece of the puzzle when it comes to success in Quake. And CNC is just playing such a smart game, a patient game. He's, he's not feeding himself into these situations. He's not getting frustrated by it. No, but it has to be frustrating as Dramas time and time again just pits in these situations and does incredible damage. Not going to go up the jump pad for a second time. He's learned his lesson there. Goes out through the low ground. CNZ, you can just see the methodical play coming out from the Estonian. Just A, B, C. Keeps his timing strong. Oh, as I say that, he does fall on down. Hopefully, Dramas is not in the vicinity to punish that, which he's not. It might even offset him slightly. His timing has now changed. I was checking that through Dramas' point of view, and he definitely didn't see it. So his entire pathing was was based around understanding Mega was going to get picked up. More than likely why he got taken by surprise there, because I don't think he was expecting CNT to be quite there at that time. But we're entering one and a half no. minutes left to go. Surprise, but no damage. Oh, oh not again. Oh. This is so reminiscent of map one, where the situation was there for the taking. Dramas coming in with the peak. It doesn't connect, but he's done his job somehow. Oh. CNZ nearly got that cleanup frag. Despite not Jamis showing face, the trap was there, and now he's probably even going to be able to give himself a heavy. He does drop on down, and he will be going down. Not only that, to make matters worse, the Fortress Totem has been taken out. Jamis is on the offensive. He knows how weak his opponent is. He's got nothing to work with. The damage is good, though, from CNZ. Backing out with that Totem has done a fair amount. Five to five, 50 seconds to go. Well, CNZ's Jamis defensive play by that yeah. teleporter exit was phenomenal. Dramis, there was, like I said before, there was a blood in the water situation, knowing how weak CNZ was. If I push in, I get one good rocket. You know, the, the tide will be turned in my favor. 
As close as this is, it is CNZ. The pressure's on to Turn get this up as well. So he knows the timings, but he hasn't got anything to work with. And trying to set up this trap, he's not been moving out to get any light armors. There should be one spawning in the next few seconds, and there it is. And now CNZ's in a de decent position to fight. He won't be able to contest this Mega. He waits around for nice. the timing and to hit the exit rail. But what he does know now is where Dramas is and what the timing of this next item is. So he's going to drop that from the top. Hits a nice rail. He's going to try and hit the second, but that connection will stop any thought of that. The classic Dramas maneuver that we've seen all series long. In oh, all no, of these he knows instances. exactly where he is now. And you're stuck. Oh, this yeah, is terrible news. This is bad. The peak is out there. But even then, oh. how does CNT escape the situation? You are stuck in no man's land, and Dramas actually lets him out. He respects yeah. it. He plays the long game. He gets the item. That was a big opportunity. I'm surprised that Dramas did not push in for the kill there. He definitely smelt blood. And he's given CNT another life for now. But Dramas has full control. Maybe Dramas assuming that if I just keep my rail pinpoint of which there's another one. If I have this control over my opponent, I hit the rails that I keep on hitting. There's just mathematically yes. no way I can lose this fight. And speaking of which, the delay between these items is so good. Looks to get the opening shot first. This Mega would have been so much more punishing for CNT if Dramas hit that rail, of which he didn't. Oh, An aggressive rocket. push. He's not going to chase this down. Oh <laughs> my good lord, he's so weak. Where's the peeker? Gets railed out of the sky. But Dramas surely has to know. Yeah, Mate, knows. there's no pickups around here. You're not going to have anything. There's no way CNZ survives. Surely catch up. Dramas oh, knows exactly oh, where he is. You can almost yet. see the trail of blood following CNZ around the map. Yes, you're down by the heavy, but there is nothing there for you, my friend. Not for another 10 seconds. And with that 10 seconds comes a Dramas, just barrels through the totems to assert his alpha dominance. You think I care about these right exactly. now? Exactly. Like he's just got. Armour for days. And CNZ, though, he's still alive. He's still recouping. And then some, though. That's the thing. He's like, on life support, but he is there. All it takes is one exchange where a rail doesn't hit its mark and CNZ does land it. Exactly. And then, bam, we're even. He this could have, in theory, been over two minutes ago. The second CNZ got stuck yeah, in no man's it land. It should have been. Dramas just let it go. Will he rue that day? The question is, because he's continuing with the pressure, but he just cannot find that critical finishing blow. We might have an opportunity. I, I, I've seen this Except exact that. past 30 <laughs> seconds before. This is a rerun. Now. now. Are we going to see that exact same thing in 30 <laughs> seconds time? I that's, mean, that's what I'm thinking about. I mean, we're, getting, we're getting very patterned here. But beyond deja vu. No, but movement wise, we're getting extremely patterned. But it's not like CNT can do anything about it. You know, no, you, but you just don't have the stack. He can't. Until he hits successive shots, he can't. But with how much longer this overtime is going to take, especially seeing this, the fact that Dramas let it slip through. Is the next time an item spawns, is that going to be the moment where a couple of misses happen and just like no, that, CNT they're brings on, it. Oh, he they trade. Well, they were even. CNT's not going to show his face. And that is the CNT that we know. It, it makes no sense that he would peak that. He's seen it though. He, he can afford to. What? I mean, I'm sorry. This CNT must be so frustrated. Every time he gets any semblance of a stack, it just gets removed instantly. But it's like I said, it's demanding perfection in the aim department. Can Dramas keep this up all the way? But this is this is a different Dramas. Like if this was Pro League, I Pro League, Pro League, I guarantee you he would have pushed in for a kill. Probably got it. Maybe not. This is tournament Dramas. What? Somebody who is playing methodical and slow and calculated and respects his life in this tournament. It's one hell of a tournament to get that result in. CNZ is well and truly trapped right now because, yeah, there's a little bit of health to pick up, but it's the armor that you're struggling with, and I, I really think the Dramas has caught sight. You know your opponent's going to have a light armor now, so again, one more rail, and that will be a ticket to push in and keep on going, but yet somehow CNZ, through thick and thin, is still yeah, alive. I'm sure CNZ is sitting there going, yeah, this next fight he won't hit. 100% rail. I'm, I'm sure hey, of it. We've got to keep. Sure we've got to give CNT props though. The defensive positionings do open themselves to a very difficult to chase situation. Uh, CNZ like down near the heavy. You have to really dedicate to a direction to chase one that CNZ can hear very much so. And then even down near the teleporter where Tribo is again, very hard to chase someone there because there's so many ways they can go. And look at that. He's been able to bring himself up to another stack. He is back in it, folks.
This, yeah, and this is why I love watching Ruins, because it offers so many dyna dynamic situations like that. You can play defensive, you can play aggressive, and you can see CNZ absolutely testing the map to its limits on how you can survive. And Dramis continues his rotation. He continues to pick up the items. I don't know the last time CNZ saw a major item, let alone touched one. It must feel like gold to him at this moment in time. But he has the lights. He just cannot do any significant damage to feel confident to stick around. Even if he knows the timing, it's irrelevant. He tries to push on in. He tries to set up some sort of trap because he's only been holding his S key for the last five minutes. And Dramis tells the corner. This is a nice change, though. CNZ hasn't been able to match in the. Oh, no, he's caught him! No. He's caught him! <laughs> CNZ oh survives God. and oh. lives to fight another day. That, that was insane mental fortitude. Insane mental body. He's even he's even keeping DJ Wheat fit with the reps and the back and forth of the green room. See you later. Um, <laughs> that was an absolutely insane game, and we said it. Like you, you got to respect the patience from Dramis. That moment when he had him cornered, 45 health, I think it was. That was it. Dramis must have known how weak CNZ was, but he said, "Hey." I'm gonna I'm gonna play slow. I'm gonna keep the items. I'm gonna play my game, and I'll get you when I'm ready. But you should have got him then. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't think we were alone there. It's like I know the chat. You know, we've we've seen the chat for for many years in Quake. I guarantee when that first rail hit down near where that light armor was, chat must have been filling up with GG. Like. Everyone saw it and must have just been like, yeah, that, I that's I said it. GG in my head because that's the moment you finish your opponent. How many times have we seen there that be the GG? There is literally no exit. You're standing there in, an, in the corner of an L. There is nowhere to go. How fitting. And somehow CNZ slithers his way out and survives for another five minutes. Now we have to give the props to CNZ. Oh, though. 100%. You acknowledge that the opponent you're fighting is just right. I I'm fighting an AI that is just hitting every <laughs> shot, right? So this is what I'm dealing with. There's a very obvious reason that CNZ had just dedicated to those two special areas of the map where you have better ways to get out. Even 100%. with Dramas' speed, you know, I, I can go this way or that way, and you got to dedicate. But that was, apart from the one health time, that was the only opportunity CNZ offered a chance for Dramas to kill him. Yes, CNZ got low time and time again after then, but as you pointed out, he was always in positions where he could punish Dramas or escape. Dramas actually didn't really have an opportunity thereafter to finish his opponent unless he hard committed, which he could have done. But what CNZ did so perfectly was bide his time for five minutes until he felt he was in the right position at the right time with the right stack to make a move. And it, well, I'm not even talking about the frag. I'm talking about before the frag, when he went in through the corridor with the LG and did about 20, 30, 40 damage. That, that was A, showing confidence. And then he followed that up with the double back was when Dramas thought he was on the run. And that initial chip damage actually got him the frag as well. So that 30 second moment, if it was even that, was absolutely perfect, and he waited five minutes for that one moment. It's like we've said many times before that when you think of CNZ, the word that often comes to mind is discipline. Yeah. You've got to be out of this world disciplined to look for that. In that situation, yeah. like so many people, they would have crumbled. The amount of rails, you'd have, got, you'd have got tilted off the face of the earth because what the hell's going on? It doesn't matter what I do, I just get hit constantly. CNZ, there was absolutely no tilting, no frustration to no. be had. Clearly, a, a calm and collected demeanor, and that is why he's here. That's, and that's why, why he's here. But that's week. also why he always does well in these environments. He always goes far in tournaments. Even back to Katowice, the last LAN we had, he went far. That was one of his first tournaments. That's, that's when the Sparty, was it Sparty ring out? That kept him in the tournament? Who was that? Garpy? Oh. That was the CNZ Molten Falls moment. I remember that. Back in our last LAN, and he went far then. That's already been some time ago. Yeah, huh? exactly. And every single one of these situations, he always ends up going further than people expect him to because of that character he shows in these type of games. Well, here's the thing, though. But he's not, he's not even in out of his match yet. There's one more map to go. That's it. <laughs> We're jumping into Deep Embrace. We're loading into it now, folks. So thanks for sticking with us in a basically short of a minute, I think we'll be jumping into it. It's a very different map. Oh, yeah. It's a very different map. It's one of the most aggressive snowball-y maps that we have in the entire pool, possibly the most. Uh, but with the 
champion picks. Again, it's a little bit different right here. CNZ's going to have the utility of that double jump, the quick little escape in a pinch, thanks to the sort of new and improved Berserk, I suppose. But then Dramas, Death Knight, all damage. That's it. That's the plan. Do you think Dramas is, is feeling frustrated at this moment in time? Or do you think he's happy with how he performed? I would think that of these two players, Dramas would be more prone to becoming frustrated. However, because Dramas has done so many of these tournaments in return, one would think that hey, we might be pretty good at stabilizing this. However... Oh, the double jump over the fire. Yep. Eradicating that ability altogether. And Dramas is already on the ropes as CNZ's chip damage has been really strong with the heavy machine gun. Lots of lightning gun coming out as well. So nice start. But as you say, different map. Big question mark is... Can Dramas continue to hit pretty much everything he fires? Because that is going to be a problem if he does. I mean, that's rather canonical. <laughs> I don't imagine Doom Slayer to be afraid of a little fire, you know, <laughs> hell, on, <laughs> hell on all, you know. But as we now jump in, CNZ pretty healthy here. And actually, this is one element that I want to, to bring attention to was in those closing kind of 60 seconds or so, maybe a little bit more, CNZ started using a little bit more of the tri-bolt, acknowledging yes. that you're not really winning those rail duels anymore, but you can preemptively use tri-bolt, which is a much safer approach of just trading some damage. Maybe not all the damage, but enough to make it so this rail was not going to be a, kind of a free ticket nice to push rocket. forward. Yeah, that was indeed a very nice rocket. But even Steven so far, and... I mean, there's a lot on the line here. They know each other extremely well. They've been playing together in 2v2s, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this is certainly not the first time they've clashed in a dual tournament. I mean, they refer back to Iron Fist. Play. Yeah. They always play somehow in the brackets. So they know each other well, and they have very opposing play styles. But CNZ's done a great job at this moment in time to keep the tempo slow, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with that damage. And their items are on an equal split as well. CNZ trying to track down Dramas, but unsuccessfully at that. However, he's double back before this heavy. He knows his opponent is weak, and he's oh my oh. god! Yeah, that was close. And because of that, he's also been heavily punished. So I, I did like the maneuver, wow. but Dramas is there to clean it up, delaying the Mega even more. It's still not picked up. And now there is a big split between these two major items catch up. And a delay of that caliber will be quite good for Death Knight. It gives you plenty of opportunities to kind of run around, pick up the hourglasses in between items where, you know, yeah, you're probably not going to have a flame strike every single item spawn. But at the same True. time, for most of them, you're likely going to. On a map like this, on that heavy location, yeah. such a small area for that wall of flame to just completely shut things down. It's a scary position to be in. There's the flame strike once more. A little bit of splash damage, nothing too significant, but enough to make you not push forward. I mean, CNZ, he couldn't push. It was way too much of a risk. No, but he's controlling the mid-ground well. The spam is going to slow down Dramas it advances towards that heavy area. In doing so, CNZ will win it for himself. Question is, will he take any sort of significant damage in the process? The Tribot comes out, actually ducks under that rail, it looks like. So nicely played by Dramas. And whilst he's relegated to the low ground, he's not taking any significant damage just yet as he knocks down his opponent, clipping him from above and connecting with that rail as well once again. And we've said that so many times. When you become a master of the rail, you will find angles and places no one would even dream right. of. And Dramas, kind of one of those players that can think, oh, what? CNZ just must not have expected that. Like, there's no way he's going to turn around. I've just got rid of all the armor. I strongly don't think that's going to happen now. The defensive Berserk using it to retreat, as it often has been. But no, caught in a bad spot, the Berserk. Great for mobility, but you're stuck on a time limit with melee only. You get caught by an LG and say goodnight. Yeah, but this, I've seen this story before. Map one, map two, Dramas with a threes. You know, three, four, five frag lead. Somehow CNZ will scrape his way back into it. The big difference so far, what we've seen in the playing of this game is that CNZ is doing a good job of using the Doom's passive to maintain more control of the high ground. However, that momentum does appear to be shifting somewhat. And Dramas now got himself up to here. Another couple of rails back to back. Doesn't complete it with a third. CNZ is waited out for that mega, but it's quickly removed once again. But he's more than used to living with no items, so it's not going to be too concerning just yet. And he's doing a decent enough job of keeping Dramis low enough where he doesn't feel confident either to push on through. He's going for the risky jump, and he makes it. And that's the splash damage. Get a little bit of bonus information right before we jump through and take one of these items, of which Dramis keeping himself in the fight, and then some. The Mega about to spawn. Something CNZ 
wants to make his presence known, but what a risk it will be, because it just seems like in all of these ranged encounters, and even now the Tribolt, bit of a taste of your own medicine, the Tribolt is starting to do a lot of damage to him as well. CNZ not in an amazing spot at this point. Nice. Oh God, not again, almost got ring out. The Berserk forced once more to try and get out of there, and doing so will completely give up the heavy. And you know, we've, we've talked about the comebacks and the composure. Five minutes left of this entire series, Dan. It, it really is now or never for CNZ. Yeah, but it's deep embrace. He has plenty of time. Dramas is not hitting quite as hard on this particular map. However, uh, Norris CNZ is a very low scoring, low damage map. Nice. And the difference in strategy is clear. CNZ is doing such a great job of playing the high ground. And it means as much control as Jamis has, it's difficult and if not impossible a lot of these times to do anything significant from the low ground. CNZ now has some items to his name. He's not had many of those in actually all an all series long, but he's starting to build a little bit of momentum here. Jamis darting himself around. CNZ needs to get a dodge with a frag as well. Wonderful positioning there from CNZ. Punishing that from Dramis amazingly. And right before death, Dramis using the flame strike. However, spawning on the rail side, a consistent tail that that kind of can sometimes be all that Dramis wants or needs to have with that opening damage just to make it so hard for you to establish. Now, this is going to be very hard. CNZ has all of the control. The items are great. The armor is non existent for poor old Dramis. How do you escape there? I mean, how do you get out of this? I've seen this story before. Travis gets out for now, but he's been caught once again. Look how low he is, but the flame strike this time actually connects the first time all game long, and it is a huge one. I take back what I said about Doomslayer not caring about hell now. Oh, they clearly did right there. Back for vengeance. Ultra Nightmare. As now, not a lot of the map left. The opening tribal. I mean, any damage is damage in this kind of situation. Catching him with the drop down and CNC Whoa. just gets melted away by the LG of Dramis. Yeah, that was risky. And Dramis actually lives more than healthy enough right there. And that's a little, little bit desperate from CNC, given how disciplined he's been all set long. That one, not so much. Oh, the tribo. Hasn't done the, the hugest amount of damage here, Dan, but significant. In all of those key moments where you just need a little right. bit of splash, Dramas has been able to find it. And there's another one. Caught in the Berserk and surely you're done here. You're stuck in melee. At the very least, you're forced to retreat. And with three minutes on the clock, you, this is the last point. You want to be given up items, but he has no choice. Stay and die or live. But he's got nothing to work with. Look at the stack of Dramas in comparison. CNZ is just living breath by breath. Taking another rail. I'm sure he's used to being with nothing to work with. Dramis is more than healthy. The rail and the pressure means Dramis now has the high ground, and that is difficult for CNZ. He's the one that wants to be there. He wants the one that's controlling the positioning, but she's not able to do so. Delaying the heavy as well. Dramis is now very, very happy with his position. Just needs to keep things rock solid, and by all means, should be able to win this map. CNZ just damage after damage after there damage this time a chase down through the murder hole. And that is now going to be three frags in two minutes' time versus someone like Dramas who's hitting all these shots. The flame strikes locked and loaded. He's stacked to hell. This is going to be a very, very tall order for CNZ. Yeah, the frag differential isn't the problem. It's the control. CNZ is just not able to string any damage together to get in, and now he's got no, in. No, the rocket! But at Went what through cost? The gaps. Yeah, at what cost? Straight into another flame strike. You know, the Death Knight hasn't been hugely impactful, but it had that one game-breaking moment that kept Dramas in the game. Saying that, there's still a minute and a half to go on Deep Embrace. More than capable, but every one of those rails just sets you back another 10, 15, 20 seconds, which you just do not have to work with. Even in that position, being able to catch someone who's just spawned and all they have is a rail, you think, right, if this shot misses, I can push, I can get damage, I can get something on the board here. But it's Dramas and his uncanny ability to hit every single shot when he needs to in this series. And we've known that Dramas is known for the execution and known for the aim, but I don't think we've seen it stand proud quite like it has as in this series, and would you believe it? We're on LAN. This is the World Championships. This is the time to bring the greatest aim of your career. Yeah, it might not necessarily be over, but every rail will certainly bring that statistic far closer to the certainty mark. Seems he's still in it for now. Look at the weak Dramas is. Breathe on him. Away for now. He's going to go down. The question is, 
Can he string two it's possible. frags together? Yeah. It is possible. You're not hitting that frag you know, respawn mark right now. CNZ doesn't know where he is, and he needs to kill him now. He needs to kill him clean. Oh, but the defensive plays from Drum is a two too supreme, yeah. and it has taken too long. A tall order to challenge that. And there we go again. No doubt. I'm sure we didn't catch it on camera, but there was, in fact, a pop-off behind us. <laughs> I w I'm, I'm going to assume it picked one. up on the mics. It must have done. A mini, a mini pop-off. Well, I'm, I'm sure Dramis is relieved. My heart is relieved. Series of the day, as far as I'm concerned so far. Yeah. That second map was ridiculous. You caught your breath after your, your lengths back and forth to the, ta to the table. <laughs> that second game was phenomenal. Um, I, I don't know if you heard me, uh, but I was joking, like, when did they put ZTN back in the table? Because it felt a little bit like yeah. one of those, like, or Quake 3 late game ZTNs, overtime for days, one player controlling all of the major items, and one just trying to crawl their way back. Yeah, um, yeah really unfortunate that drop down by Dramas because that LG was too. That was uh, that was melty for sure. Um, it definitely, also uh, the best series that, that we've seen. Right, we've seen some amazing games already, but I think a series from start to back. Uh, you know, one frag separating these two on both the first and second game. That last one, you know, the drama's kind of bringing it back, and mm -hmm. uh, is kind of interesting to see. Death Knight, I'm not sure why Athena's up there for that one, but uh, yeah, uh, Death Knight kind of, you know, uh, what do you what do you think? We talked a little bit about the zoning. Yeah. That was, you know, there was one particular moment where I saw CNZ over by the Mega uh, and, and you know, flames going out one side. It's like, you're going to have to go that way. It, it worked out quite well. It so. was the rail. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's, for sure. I know it's, it's such low hanging fruit to just look at that and go, oh, it was clearly rail, but it was just such an instrumental part of success. Right. Being able to just take all of those opportunities where most people would now be able to at least push in once every single rail that needed to hit did. In pretty much all three maps, you know, even though Drums didn't ultimately win that second map because it was so close, that was like, is this guy gonna miss at some point? Like, what's going on here? Like, Yeah, you have to run around the map thinking I have 90 less health than I actually do. Right. That's, that's the yeah. situation I'm gonna <laughs> exactly. be in as soon as I hear, see him. But exactly. no, to your, to your Death Knight point, there was one moment that really changed the game for me. It was when CNZ finally got a frag to, to rebuild his lead. He was looking pretty healthy, but Dramas <laughs> died casting the fire flame strike right. and it took his opponent Indeed. down with him. Yeah, that's right. He yeah. got the better spawn, yeah. he got the mega, he got control and he kept his momentum. And it was only a one frag game at that point, right? I think it was yeah, yeah like one or two frag. Yeah, yeah, really, really yeah. close. Yeah. And he got the better spawn and it, it kept his momentum alive. If, if he didn't get that, CNZ would have had control and it would have been a completely different game. I, uh, I, you know, I th in kind of thinking about the matchup overall, like I, I think it just definitely shows that Dramas is playing quite well but even though cnz lost I, I thought he had some really phenomenal play in there too so if this is again an indication of what we're going to continue to see throughout day one and day two and three i'm here for it i hope you are too yeah i hope you are too all right well gentlemen we're going to take a quick break when we come back uh another matchup here in day one of the quake world championship it's going to be nosva taking on ron that's coming up next don't go away we're going to be right back Thank <laughs> you. 